You know what's a hard word to say? Cataraugus. Cataraugus. This is a Cataraugus 225Q. These knives were made for the US military during World War II by the Cataraugus Cutlery Company out of Cataraugus County, New York. These are often referred to as quartermaster knives or sometimes more dubiously as fighting knives. Not saying you couldn't do some good fighting with this knife, but I don't imagine that was the, uh, the sole intended purpose when it was commissioned. Anyway, these are not particularly rare or valuable, so I thought it would be a good restoration candidate. It's in pretty good shape, really. The blade's in, in fantastic shape. The handle's a little bit worse for wear, and then the sheath. The sheath is not original, and it's not in very good condition. I bought this knife for $14 on a local auction, that seems to be kind of at the bottom end of their price range. It probably would have been worth more if it had an original sheath. Good condition knives like this I've seen, and they're all less than a hundred bucks. So. so yeah, let's get to it. Pretty nice knife, chunky. Six inch blade, 150 millimeters, four millimeters thick. It's got a stacked leather handle. There's some gravity in this guy. It's probably too big and bulky to be, you know, to be much of a hunting knife, but it would be a good camping knife or, you know, just a general purpose knife. Has this cool pommel with a waffle face. I don't know, you could probably use it as a hammer or shell cracker or something. Interesting construction. It has three pieces of steel laminated together. The middle piece is actually kind of a quarter turn that locks onto a tab or a slot in the tang to hold the stacked leather handle in place. And then there's a couple of nails that hold the whole thing together. Yeah, let's get it apart. See if we can make a new handle for it, clean up some of this corrosion. And then I want to make a new sheath. So the old boy I bought this knife from, he was actually one of my shop teachers when I was a kid. He was telling me some of the history said these knives were really popular. They made, I guess they made over a million of them. And the problem with them was the, the stacked leather handle and the leather sheaths. They just disintegrated in the South Pacific because of the high humidity. So even though they're not rare knives, it's kind of rare to find one that has an original sheath, I guess. I'm thinking the best thing to do would be just to cut away a couple layers of the leather. So this is plastic here, or it's probably like micarta. I can see the, the linen layers in it. Anyway, there's the tip of the nail just poking through.
there's piece one. And then this guy. Should turn. Like so. Pretty brittle. This is kind of a cool feature. So right here where the tang meets the wider part of the knife. They've added a small radius just as a stress relief. And then the, the guard here actually has an accommodation stamped into the slot to fit over that radius. That's pretty cool. On a cheaper knife, they'd just have a sharp, sharp edge right there and it's very prone to breaking. I'm just using some WD-40. Any kind of light oil will work. And this is a die polishing stone. These are available from any company that sells machinist supplies. Master car is a good place to get them. I'd be careful though because this knife is sharp here. It has, I think they call it a false double edge. Something like that. Yeah, this part's gonna take a while. I'm gonna say that's good enough. I wanna use this knife, it's not just a wall hanger, so it's gonna end up with plenty of, plenty of blemishes. kit comes with these pre-cut leather discs the problem is the slot in the middle is a little bit too small so we're just going to elongate it a little bit using a punch If I don't drop them all. All 
I believe that'll work. Well, every one of these stacked leather handle videos I've watched on YouTube is done the same way. They take the leather pieces, they slather them with some kind of two-part epoxy, and they glue the whole thing together in a giant, sticky, nasty, disgusting mess. I'm not going to do that. Here's a leather from the original handle. There's not a speck of glue on this. They put it together dry and it lasted 80 years. Good enough for them, good enough for me. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna dunk these in water so they're a little bit moist. Start stacking them up. I didn't over compress the leather. I put it in the arbor press and I really pushed on it. The thing that's weird though is I was expecting to squeeze it down and then have it spring back, but it really didn't do that. In fact, I can take these caps off and the leather stays where it was. I don't know. I'm just not happy with this handle. I mean, it worked, but it didn't work. It didn't work how I thought it was going to work. I thought I would compress the leather and then it would spring back and hold everything tight, but the pommel's kind of loose. And I tried soaking it in. What did I use? Linseed oil. And that didn't really work. I mean, the leather just soaks it, soaks the stuff right up, but it doesn't seem to expand. 
yeah, it's just not tight. It's kind of wavy. I don't like it. So we're going to start over. I got some new leather washers. These are from USA Knife Maker. And they're a little more substantial than the other ones I got. I can't remember where I got the other ones. Anyway. Let's just do it. Never going to be happy with it the way it is. Yes, I'm aware of the irony of putting a vise in a vise, but I wanted to have the smooth jaws of the drill press vise and the sturdy mount of the bench vise, so this is what you get. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I'm glad we redid it. It worked a whole lot better the second time. Except I just got a grease stain on it. Yeah, the contours are pretty close to what we, you know, what we sketched out here. It's a little bit more hourglass shaped than it was before. But I think that's a good thing. It's also a little bit gentler curve right here. So worst case scenario if I don't like it I can always grind it down a little further. Well I'm probably gonna regret this but we're gonna try it.
This is a Lansky sharpening system. We're going to set it up for 25 degrees. It's pretty good. General purpose cutting edge. This is the medium stone. I don't think we need the coarse stone. This edge is still in pretty good shape. Yeah, so we have a problem here. So we'll just move the knife down. better. So I like to just kind of hold pressure here, sort of midway between the guide and the blade. So satisfying. What's amazing to me about these knives is that so many survived. Yeah, it's true for a lot of World War II gear. It's amazing that there's so much of it still around because it really wasn't designed for longevity. You know, it had to do a job, but beyond that, it was mostly about banging them out as fast as possible. You know, Cataraugus never set out to make a to make an heirloom knife. And you can see it all over. You know, the bevels are kind of uneven where the Cataraugus kind of logo here is stamped. It's pretty uneven. And then, you know, the whole design of this pommel, you know, it's just, you wouldn't build a knife like this for yourself. At least I wouldn't. And if you look at the, like Bark River has a reproduction of this knife, they changed the pommel to be a one piece with a, a nut that you can thread on. And that's way better. Or the, like the K-bar design would be better where it's a single piece that's pressed on and then a pin goes through. But, you know, this is easy to produce. It's three pieces of thin, stamped out steel. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's my first kind of restoration video, so let me know what you think. Yeah, on to the next project.